My name is Carsten Kallesø. I'm chief engineer at Grundfos and part-time professor at Aalborg University. Today I will talk about flow estimation in wastewater networks. Flow and volume are two of the most important parameters when considering operation and uh, maintenance and supervision in wastewater networks. Unfortunately, it's expensive and difficult to measure uh, wastewater flow. Many have tried to use a pumping station for measuring the wastewater flow, but this has the drawback that, that uh, it has some assumption on, on the inflow, which are typically not valid in, in, uh, in real operation. To see this, uh, we have uh, made a small model of a wastewater network with a collection pit and a transport pit, which is one in the line from, for transporting wastewater from the end users to the wastewater treatment plant. If we consider this collection pit, this collection pit will have a fairly constant inflow, uh, at least if you are looking at, at the system in a short time frame. This inflow will slowly fill the pit until it reaches the start level. And when it reaches the start level, the pump will start and run at its, at its operating flow, and it will empty the pit until it reaches the stop level, and it will stop again, and the inflow will start filling the pit again. And this is a cycle that will continue. And using the times for filling the pit and emptying the pit, it's possible to calculate, uh, calculate the flows in the system. First, considering the inflow. Uh, the inflow is given by the volume moved in the time frame from the stop time of the pump to the start time of the pump. So we have the inflow is given by the volume in the pit divided by the time uh, the pump has been stopped. Uh, the volume in the pit is given by the area times the difference between the stopped start time and the stop time. The pump flow can be calculated in, in a similar way. Here we consider the time uh, uh, the pump is running. And we have to remember that uh, in this time frame it has to remove the water in the pit, but it also has to remove the water running into the pit. That is the inflow during that period. So we have the pump flow is given by the inflow to the pit, plus the volume divided by the time it takes to empty the pit. Rearranging this a little, we will, we will end up with an expression like this, where we have an expression of the inflow to the pit times a fraction uh, that, uh, that describes the relation to, between the stop time and the start time. Okay, so we are able in this pit to calculate the inflow and the pump flow. Now we are considering the transport pit instead. The inflow to the transport pit typically has a, a small base flow because it's collecting uh, some water from, from end users also. But when the collection pit starts, the inflow to the transport pit increases dramatically. And it continues to be high until the collection pit stops again. And we will have this block shape inflow uh, to, to the pit, which is Definitely not a constant flow, uh, as it was the assumption up here. Beside that, uh, we can even see that the, the, the average inflow during, uh, during the stop time is very much lower than the average inflow during uh, run time. And this shows that the pump flow is wrongly estimated in this case. We have solved this problem with a variable inflow by using a model-based uh, flow estimation approach in uh, the data gate controller from Grundfos. Uh, a model of, of a pump is, is given by this equation, where A1, A2, A3 and A4 are parameters that describe the pump. And these terms here are variable measured in the pumping station. So this P here is the power, which is typically measured by the frequency converter. N is the speed, which is also measured by, typically by the frequency converter. H is the level in the pit. And uh, small p is, uh, is the discharge pressure of the system. So all of these are measured variable available and in the pit. This means, and these variables are independent of the inflow. This means that we have a, an equation for calculating the pump flow, which is independent on the inflow. And we have solved the problem with variable inflow in this way but we still have the, the model of the pit. So this we use for estimating the inflow. To see this uh, change in level in the pit is given by the inflow, or equals the inflow, the inflow increases the level in the pit, minus the pump flow, which decreases the level in the pit. So here we have an equation that connects the 
change in the level in the pit and the inflow and the pump flow. By rearranging this expression, we get an equation describing the inflow, which equals the change in level plus the pump flow. So with our approach, we have an estimate not only on the pump flow, but also on the inflow to the pit. The only drawback with this solution is that we, depend, we are dependent on the, on the parameters of the, of the pump, which is the pump model. And these are typically available from, from the pump manufacturers, but this is wastewater, and wastewater pump are affected by wear and tear, and tear in a fairly short time frame. Uh, so we have to do something here. And what we have done is uh, creating a self-calibrating algorithm that is able to estimate these pump parameters uh, during operation. That is, it, it collects data from uh, uh, each pump run and adjusts the parameters according to what it sees from, from these collected data, and thereby it's able to adjust the parameters continuously. This makes an uh, inexpensive uh, way to do flow estimation and enables the use of flow estimation in, in, uh, in almost all pumping stations in, in wastewater networks. So in conclusion, uh, the dedicated controller in the network provides the water utility with a cost-effective solution that enables data collection from many points in the network compared to the few points they are measuring today. This enables them to do a better operation of the network with better maintenance and more efficient uh, operation. Thank you.